Hey guys, happy November 1st. I pulled out my Mickey mug. Actually, I've been using this all year round, you guys know, but I'm getting excited for the holiday season. So I thought it would be festive to have this one in today's video. Anyways, as you can tell, to be expected, today's video is my monthly fails and favorites videos, products that I tried out, used, loved, hated over the month of October, which flew by. I've been trying this out actually for more than a month and I've decided it is a fail. It is the Ionic Calendula Complete Cleansing Oil. Love double cleansing, love cleansing oils. Ugh, what can I say about this? It's just like if you went into the kitchen pantry, grabbed a bottle of Wesson canola oil and tried smearing it all over your face. Sure, you can try doing that but it's the same experience with th this product. It has an odd odor like a cooking oil. It doesn't really emulsify. It is just kind of overpriced canola oil. It doesn't have any fragrance in it, but it, it smells like a cooking oil. I previously was using my one of my favorites, the Inky List Oat Cleansing Balm, and I decided to try this one out. I do not recommend it. Ionic does have a few good products. They're a Korean brand, if you're not familiar. I don't know though if they're one of those Korean brands where people in Korea are like, say what? <laughs> we don't use that. Um, but anyways, I have tried some products from Ionic that I actually really like. I find the double cleansing a pleasurable experience. I enjoy rubbing the cleansing oil and cleansing balm all over my face. I just find it very relaxing. And this was like, you want fries with that? I did not care for it. Moving on to some other fails. This month, I tried out some products from Garnier. Some of them were a success and some of them were not. This product is the Garnier Green Lab Super Hydrating 3-in-1 Serum. I bought this on Amazon, but you can get it Walmart, the drugstore, you name it. Now, this product kind of builds itself as like this all-in-one. It's gonna be a moisturizer, a serum. I think it even claims to be an eye cream. I mean, a lot of promises, and you guys know I'm all about products that can go on the face, the body. I like multitasking products. This product, however, was not that. Very drying. It has hyaluronic acid in it. It also has aloe in it, which is mostly just water. It has some anti-inflammatory compounds in it. But the thing about this product is it has alcohol denaturant. Now, y'all know, whenever I say alcohol denaturant, I feel as though people have been misled to believe that you know, it's like, it's somehow like telling people to ingest gasoline whenever you mention alcohol denaturant. It has a place in skincare. It is a wonderful ingredient for ingredient stability, enhancing penetration, but in a moisturizing product, it just doesn't make sense. It tends to be on the drying side, which this is. And y'all know from my videos, when it comes to hyaluronic acid as an ingredient, you really want other ingredients in the product that have occlusive that are occlusive to trap the moisture in that the hyaluronic acid brings into the top layer of the skin otherwise you're just going to lose more water out of the skin now a way around that is to layer hyaluronic acid underneath your moisturizer which will have occlusives but since this product is kind of billing itself as a moisturizer it doesn't really have occlusive ingredients and as a result it is quite on the drying side so i don't know what they were thinking with this I do not recommend it at all. If it had an active ingredient in it, then I could see the formulation being somewhat logical because you would think, well, this is gonna enhance penetration of whatever the active ingredient is, but it really doesn't have, it's really just not offering anything. It's basically just empty vehicle that's drying. All right, I had two sunscreen fails this month. The first one is again from Garnier Green Labs. It's their Pore Perfecting Serum Cream Canabe. I actually love this as a moisturizer. It's a chemical sunscreen, and this is one of those products too that's kind of billing itself as offering multiple things. It's like a serum, a cream, it's gonna you know minimize pores, a lot of bold claims on this. Looks beautiful on the skin, no fragrance. It has hemp seed oil in it, which does have you know, some anti-inflammatory compounds in it and acts as an emollient to smooth down and soften skin cell edges. That kind of gives the skin a luminous glow, which I always enjoy in products. However, this product seeps into the eyes as you wear it and the chemical sunscreen ingredients burn like the Dickens in this product. I could not tolerate wearing it on the face, um, at least on the upper face. Um, you could get away with just using it on the lower face, but you should not just put sunscreen to the lower face, unless you're wearing like some kind of opaque 
like mask from the top up, which is just, yeah, that's a stretch. Anyways, uh, yeah, this was definitely a pass solely for the issue around it seeping into the eyes and burning. I think if this were a water resistant formula, then you wouldn't have that issue. Speaking of vision blurring sunscreens, here's another one. Um, this one I had really high hopes for because of the brand. I like most of their sunscreens. I've tried uh, pretty much all of them. Um, I love Cetaphil and I really had high hopes for this. It is their whipped day cream, healthy radiance whipped day cream. It has good ingredients, niacinamide, which is good in sunscreens. It's anti-inflammatory, good for redness. And this actually looks beautiful, beautiful on the skin. Same kind of issues though, where it ends up seeping into the eyes. And this one is even worse as far as the burning eyes because I think the reason for that is not only does it have the chemical sunscreen ingredients, which can burn when they get into your eyes, but it also has niacinamide, which can burn when it gets in the eyes. And it also has resorcinol in it, which is an antioxidant. I mean, those are great ingredients, but dang, you do not want them seeping into your eyes. So this was a fail for me solely because of the issues with it seeping into the eyes. The Cetaphil Combination Skin Moisturizer with SPF I never had that issue with that product and it's a chemical sunscreen. It's not water resistant. It actually kind of has a similar whipped consistency that this one does, but it does not, it does not do the burny eye thing. This looks great on the skin, by the way. Um, it's got some like mica-ish things. I'm gonna put it on the lower half of the face because I cannot tolerate it up here with the burny eyes. Um, I bought this on Amazon. See how nice it looks? It's really pretty look to the skin. I mean, really like it. it. Doesn't burn or sting going on the skin. And the consistency, it's very moisturizing without being greasy or anything. It doesn't pill, but dang, it burns. So that one was a fail for me. Um, and I would instead recommend their combination skin chemical sunscreen. That one is, doesn't do that. And I think when, when I look at the, when I compare the ingredients, I really think it has to do with that. Uh, resorcinol in this, which is a good antioxidant, but I think that's what's causing the burning in the eyes because I don't experience that with other Cetaphil chemical sunscreens. The niacinamide in this, by the way, I think is 2%, which is a great percentage. So I don't even really think it's the niacinamide. I think it's that resorcinol. Let me know, have y'all tried that? What was your experience? I am currently using the cl facial cleanser from this line and I really like it. It has polyhydroxy acids. And it's doing a good job. I haven't been using it that long though, but I like it. As far as sunscreens that I'm currently wearing, pretty much the same ones that I've been wearing for a while. Um, the Aven one, I'm really loving. And then that tinted one from, from uh, Epionce. Love that, looks amazing on the skin. I just really like it. It's a tinted mineral sunscreen. So those are kind of the ones that I'm using mostly. I finished the Skin Aqua, and I'm also using the Isentree um, Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel. That really does look nice on the skin as well. That's a chemical sunscreen. If you missed my review on that, definitely check that out. I reviewed that this month along with some of Isentree's other products. Okay, but hair care, I had some wins this month. All right, this Garnier Fructis line, I'm always getting questions from you guys. Please recommend some more affordable drugstore type price range, shampoos, conditioners. And Garnier, while I had some fails with their, with their sunscreen and Hyala Boo Boo or whatever that is, these I have been loving. This is their Pure Clean Hair Reset Rebalancing Shampoo, Greasy Hair and Scalp, and then their Hydrating Conditioner. This particular one is for more oily hair types. It has salicylic acid in it, which is good for people who deal with dandruff, and the charcoal can kind of absorb some excess oil from the scalp and from the hair. I really enjoyed this. I also have their Hydrating one, I think it's called, which is a little bit more for people with a drier hair type, and it has peppermint oil in it, which is a fragrance kind of gives that tingle but I actually like that one as well and then their conditioner and what I like about this line is that they really have a few different shampoos and then just this one conditioner so if you are someone who uses like hair care products and you need to be kind of changing up shampoos a little bit as far as what your hair needs on a given day I like that 
this line has that, but you don't really need to change up your conditioner per se. So I like that they didn't put out a bunch of different conditioners to go with each shampoo. So they've got, they've got a clarifying shampoo, which is good if you use a lot of hair care products that can lead to a buildup. It has, um, it does have sulfates in it, which help remove that. Now, if you live somewhere with hard water and you're trying to avoid the sulfates because of that soap scum film, then these would not be good for you. But um, I haven't had any issue with that, even though I have very hard water. The products leave my hair very soft, very manageable. You've got the three shampoos and then this conditioner. You can get these at Walmart and they're pretty inexpensive. This is a hair care win. The Biolage Conditioning Balm Hydrosource. This is amazing. I like to do a conditioning hair mask. I mean, this calls itself a balm, but I think it's just another name for hair mask. A few nights a week. And I love the Function of Beauty one. I recently finished a tub of it and I've been using this and it is really good too. These conditioning balms or conditioning hair masks, they're a lot thicker than a conditioner and they're really good for coating each individual strand. The advantage of using this a few times a week in lieu of just regular conditioner is that, again, it's a lot thicker of a formulation so you get more coating of the hairs, less runoff. And as a result, it really does help not only to uh, minimize the charge on the hair that is left behind from shampooing, but it also has ingredients in it that can kind of fill in little porosities that lead to just areas of the hair shaft that are more fragile. So it can reduce breakage doing something like this, especially if you have sustained a lot of heat damage from heat styling your hair. Maybe you color treat your hair frequently or you live somewhere with hard water. Um, I do recommend doing a conditioning hair mask or hair balm a few times a week to kind of help with the dryness and brittleness that can arise from using that hard water. Um, so I've really been happy with this and I like the scent actually. It doesn't have methyl isothiazolinone in it, nor do the Garnier shampoos by the way. And that's that preservative that often pops up in hair care products and people frequently become allergic to. So I've really been happy as a clam with that. This isn't just this past month, several months. I have really been into the matcha tea lately, I have been having matcha every day and I really, I've really just been on a matcha kick. And the peak tea matcha is super smooth, it dissolves quickly in either hot or cold water and it's not clumpy or anything. I love it. It doesn't like really settle out. I've experienced that sometimes with matcha. Um, so I've really been enjoying matcha and matcha tea is very rich in EGCG and antioxidants that can help reduce inflammation. Whatever, it tastes delicious. But one thing I have recently really gotten into is tea lattes, not only with the matcha tea, but also with the peak turmeric tea. I've really been jiving on that or the hibiscus beauty elixir. I have a milk frother from Amazon and I just put the crystals directly in the milk frother, add almond milk and let it go. It heats up the milk. And of course the crystals dissolve really quick, quickly and you get a little bit of a froth. It is delicious. Works well in that frother. Y'all probably have realized I've so gotten into painting my nails over the past month. I'm just really loving it and it's just been my jam. And I've really been liking these Sally Hansen Insta Dry colors. So this was sent to me from Amazon and this is something I would have just been like, whatever, I'm not plunking down however much it is for this on this product. It is the OPI Nail Envy, and this has been a nail polish game changer. It's a nail, it is actually a nail strengthener. It has wheat proteins in it that, similar to hair conditioner, kind of fill in the little porosities in the nail and reduce nail breakage. They don't actually make your nails truly stronger or correct brittle nails. They're just kind of a temporary Band-Aid on a, on a brittle nail. The reason I really like this though is that it helps the nail polish go on better and last longer. The duration of polish wear is much longer using this and I will definitely be purchasing this myself when I run out of this. So I haven't watched many movies this past month but let me know in the comments, have you guys seen the new movie Dune? That's one of my favorite books. I'm kind of on the fence as to whether or not I wanna see it. You know when you really love a book and then the movie comes out you're kind of a little bit afraid that Hollywood is gonna ruin it, at least for certain types of books. So that's kind of where I'm at with that right now. But I did watch the Justin Bieber documentary on Amazon Prime and it was actually pretty good. I do enjoy Justin Bieber's music and 
I was a little let, not let down, but I don't know. I was kind of expecting, I was kind of hoping that the documentary would be a little bit more personal, getting to know him a little bit better. I feel like they kind of roped you in, making you think that that's how it was going to be. And it really wasn't. It was mostly just him in concert or him backstage or whatever. I mean, I guess that's his life. But I was kind of hoping, because he sort of vlogged parts of it, but it seemed very staged. Like he was carrying the camera around a la vlog style um, with his wife. And I was hoping he would, but the things he was saying, it seemed a little scripted. Let me know if you guys watched it. It seemed scripted to me. So I really didn't feel like we got to know Justin, the real Justin Bieber. But the music part was great. <laughs> so it's worth watching if you like Justin Bieber's music um, and you just wanna have it on in the background, but you don't need to be like intensely focused on it because it's just really not that deep. It's mostly just the music and you can have it playing in the background. You don't need to be looking at it. I mean, they're attractive people in the movie, so if you wanna, in the documentary, so if you wanna look at it, then fine. But if you need something playing in the background, I'm one of those people, when I have to get something done, like work done on the computer, that's gonna take me a long time. Um, I like to have some sort of background noise kind of thing, and this would be a good one. You can look up episodically when you need an eye rest break and look away. All right, book update though. I finished listening on Audible to And the Band Played On. Highly recommend that. It is a nonfiction book about the HIV epidemic. And I highly recommend listening to it because it's just so remarkable how many parallels there are between what happened then with that and what is currently happening now. Just how people react, their behaviors, their responses. Um, you can see a few parallels. Um, it is graphic. So if you have children, I would not have it playing in the car. I mean, there's very graphic parts of it. Is graphic the right word? What is it when it's like listening and it's, and it's explicit? I guess I would just say there's some explicit verbiage in the book. So don't listen, I wouldn't listen to it with children in the car, uh, but it is good. But I have a more lighthearted read for you guys that you need to read. It will bring a lot of happiness in your life, at least for me, I'm not finished with it yet. I got this at the library, it's called I Capture the Castle. Oh my God, this is so good. It's by Dodie Smith who wrote 101 Dalmatians. This book is hilarious. It is about these this family that lives in this old rundown castle and it's set in the 1930s, but somehow it is so relatable. This author, in addition to writing The 101 Dalmatians, also wrote a book called, or a story called The Starlight Barking. I don't know if that's a children's book, but I may need to read it. 101 Dalmatians is actually one of my favorite Disney movies. While I always tell you guys I'm not really a Disney person, like I'm not into Disney movies or going to Disney so much, I mean, whatever, it's fine, it's entertaining. I love the Disney movies, for example, with Haley Mills, Pollyanna, I love that movie, or with, uh, what, what's the one, The Parent Trap? Oh, I love that movie. And I read, at least on Wikipedia, that at one point Disney wanted to do a movie a version of this with Haley Mills, and then something happened, they decided not to, and then, I don't know. Um, but I think the BBC actually did, made a movie of this, so I'll have, to I'll have to check that out, see if I can't find it and watch it, but it is hilarious, it is hilarious, and I've really been enjoying it. So I recommend reading that, reading this especially. It's a good book too for like the colder months, because I don't know, there's this kind of sense of, the castle they live in is isn't very cold. The narrator and the people in the story, they have that kind of dry humor that I really appreciate. So this was definitely a favorite of the month. All right, last but not least, this isn't just this month. Well, I guess it is, some of it is. These bracelets, um, a viewer actually sent to me, she makes these, Bellamare Designs, I think it's called. They are customizable um, bracelets that you can have. So you can customize them with names, and I think they make a perfect gift, but I've been wearing them a lot lately because I love these colors, they're kind of beachy, but they go well with this sweatshirt, for example. Just the pretty colors, the neutral colors, I like that, actually. Even though I'm supposed to be wearing more colors, which you guys have to credit me, I have been doing a really good job this year, only two more months left, with wearing more color. But, you know, in the fall, some of those autumnal shades, I just think this kind of looks nice 
with them, but I wanted to mention this because I've been wearing these a lot. And this is a great little Etsy shop. If you like to shop on Etsy, I do. Um, and you're looking for some gifts for the holiday, I would definitely check this shop out. Everything has been very good quality that they have sent me. That was October, hits and misses, fails and faves. Comment below, did you have a good October? What things did you love, hate? Let me know. Anyways, you guys, I hope you liked this video. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.